Today's decision to ban these bee killers is a beacon of hope for our bees. It's great to see that countries have seen what the scientists, what farmers and what citizens in their home countries have been saying for years and years um, and moved to ban these poisons. For many people, bees are a bit of a nuisance, but without them, life on Earth would be in serious danger, especially since a third of all the food we eat depends on bees. In recent years, the bee population has seen a steady decline and the European Union has been forced to take action. Last week, the EU's top court backed a ban on three of the most widely used insecticides seen as harmful to bees. And while the decision has been welcomed by many, not everyone is impressed. Some farmers and pesticide manufacturers say the EU is being overly cautious and that the decision will actually hurt crop production and trigger a surge in food prices. So who's right? Well, who better to debate that question than Vitenis Andriokaitis. He's the European Commissioner for Health and Food Safety and joins us now from Brussels. And we have Graham Taylor as well. Graham is the Director of Public Affairs for the European Crop Protection Association. It represents some of the biggest producers of the banned pesticides. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Vitenis, can we start by you laying out the EU's position on this for us? Protection of bees is a very important issue for the Commission uh, since it concerns not only environment, not only biodiversity. It, of course, concerns all, all, all our, our uh, style of life, culture and food production. But can you imagine if we will lose the bees population and it, it will be a disaster for our agriculture and for as, as we need to have bees uh, uh, alive, and it's, it's about about many many issues. And there was this big concern about about the situation from European Commission side, and it was uh, one of the uh, of the initiative of President uh, Juncker, uh, for whom it is uh, uh, a priority. Uh, okay, Graham, let's come back to you about this issue about uh, the rate of population death amongst bees around the world. Just to take the United Kingdom and the USA as examples, April 2015 to April 2016 in the United States, 44% of bee colonies were uh, destroyed. And in the UK, beekeepers reporting losses of almost 17%. That's pretty dramatic. That's quite definitive from beekeepers themselves. Sure. Um, I mean, maybe perhaps let me first say that I, I entirely agree with, with Commissioner Andrew Kytus when he talks about the importance of, of bees and the importance of, of biodiversity. Um, and that's particularly important for, for our industry and protecting health and protecting the environment is something that is absolutely forefront in, in all of the considerations of our industry as we, as we develop and try to bring um, new products to the market. Um, turning to your, your question about bees more, more specifically, um, I think we have to take the, the situation in the, in the States and the, the situation in the EU um, somewhat separately. Um, I know that there is there's very different evidence um, in, in the States and the, the nature of the problem is rather dif different. But if you look at, at the UK, and I, I certainly would not dismiss um, the, that, you know, the, the loss that's reported is, is troubling, um, but I think that, you know, to go back to your, your original question, which was, I think, alarming, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily um, agree with that. If you look at, you know, the natural loss of, uh, rate of loss of colonies that the beekeepers might expect. Um, the issue for us as an industry, however, is, is of course that it's very easy to point the finger at, at pesticides. Um, and I think there are a lot of other issues, a lot of other factors, many of which the Commission itself has acknowledged, um, that need to be addressed if we're to truly um, tackle uh, this problem. OK, I'm going to come back to you on uh, that issue of uh, the pesticides and uh, how many countries agreed with the EU law that will come into force fully by the end of 2018. But let's first uh, talk with you, Vitenis, about this ban on a specific substance, neocotinoids. What do they do to bees in terms of the science that has persuaded the EU to pass this law? 
the European Commission decided to restrict use of three neonicotinoids in 2013 because uh, um, evidence shows that uh, bees' population uh, is uh, going down. And then we started to, to, to ask EFSA to provide a lot of scientific evidence once again. And scientific evidence shows clearly that uh, those three neonicotinoids create big problems to bees' uh, population. And uh, of course, uh, 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 we should act immediately uh, uh, to, to protect uh, uh, biodiversity, environment, and, and bees. And of course, also uh, to, to explain to member states why we are doing it. And we propose our, our decisions. It was endorsed by majority of member states, and it was uh, um, at standing committee level supported by, by, by majority of countries. And we know very well that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, in place uh, uh, enough of, uh, of insecticides which can be used uh, 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 in substituting uh, those three neonicotinoids, because, as you know, uh, now we have more than 100 insecticides which uh, uh, were assessed by, by science, or, and, and uh, we here see no doubt that uh, those uh, insecticides not create problems to, to, to bees' population. Okay, and okay. And it means that farmers have opportunity to use alternatives in their hands. Okay. Graham, uh, is your organization arguing with that science? A lab in Italy, which is funded by the EU, found that neocotinoids do damage bees in the United States and in Canada. This, uh, a study found exactly the same, that those neocotinoids uh, short-circuit a bee's memory and navigation. And only four countries in the EU voted against this law that we're talking about. Does your organization disagree with that science? Um, I think, firstly, I, I would disagree with the Commissioner's characterization of the, um, of the assessment when he says that it, it's highlighted that neonics cause, so neonicotinoids cause um, huge problems. Um, I don't think that's what the, the report of EFSA said. The report of EFSA highlighted the fact that, that there are risks. Um, the report of EFSA, um, in fact, EFSA's own um, director of the pesticide unit said very clearly after the, the issuing of that report that they couldn't say that there was um, a low risk, nor could they really say that there was a high risk. Um, and whilst you know, I think it's possible to, to respect an institution and, and respect its findings, but to also disagree with it. And I think where we, we disagree is, is the level to which those risks that are identified, and I don't think we as an industry deny that, that there is there is a, a level of risk, there are levels of risk um, in, in anything we do, um, but it's how those risks can be mitiga mitigated against and how they can be addressed and we feel that can be done satisfactorily. How much is the pesticide industry in the European Union worth? Can you put a figure on it? It's, it's difficult to give you a, a precise figure, but what I can say is that um, we put six billion euros every year into research and development to bring newer, better, safer products onto the market. Um, and we're trying to continue to, to do that. Commissioner Andrew Kytus uh, referred to some of the alternatives that are, are available to, to neonicotinoids. Um, he said that farmers um, have, have access to, to viable alternatives. We've been speaking to a number of farmers, we've been speaking to, to growers, and, and they don't see it in that way. Um, okay. And actually, Many of them see that this, this decision is going to have a significant impact on, on European agriculture. OK, very briefly, you don't mind, Graham. How much of that six billion is going into looking at organic farming methods and more sustainable farming methods? But very briefly, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think something that isn't really known about our industry is that actually we make up 70 percent of the, the market for organics. Again, I can't give you a specific figure on um, how much of it is going into to R&D for organics, but we make up 70% of that market. Vitenis, finally, is the EU considering any alternative to bees pollinating crops and flowers? 
Uh, you know, at the moment, I am in, uh, I, as I mentioned, we have uh, proof one, uh, 492 uh, active substances in the EU, of which 108 substances are insecticides. And you know that uh, farmers know very well that those who were approved uh, between 2006, 2012, those so-called old substances, uh, they show, uh, they was very approved because evidence shows that they are not dangerous for bees and not dangerous for people's health, and they can, can be used. And of course, speaking about uh, possibilities to use as alternatives, farmers have enough uh, now options to use uh, alternatives because it was before approval of those three neonicotinoids. And once again, it's important to understand that neonicotinoids not have, uh, you know, not have, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 much more uh, uh, preferences related to those uh, old neonicotinoids. Now evidence shows that uh, that uh, those three neonicotinoids, they are not so uh, effective as, as, as previous one. Vitenis and Graham, thank you both very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.